That kind of thing? That kind of thing. All right, is this recording? Yeah, it's recording. Oh my god. Oh, it's <laughs> god. This guy. All right, sir. Get ready? To work. Welcome back guys, my name is David, I'm here at CEG and I'm here to talk about a new topic that uh, we visited some time ago but we're going to call it a new topic because we're going to revisit it like it's new. But anyways, this chat is where to work. As you know, Vegas is a big place. A new customer or a new student comes, arrives at the school. Uh, so we talk about the, you know, what options are available for them in the terms of like where to work. So where to work breaks down real basically into three fundamental groups. Okay, no, four, okay, wait, no, five fundamental groups, okay? Here in Vegas, we have the Strip, the Valley, lo or local casinos, and then downtown. That's the first three. Number four is sort of um, out of market, uh, specifically like, you know, Indian reservations, these types of things. Number five is literally way out of market. That's the opportunity to go work on a cruise ship, go overseas, I mean, the greatest thing about being a dealer is that there's just a ton of opportunity. I mean, in the United States so far, there's like 26 states, maybe someone will correct me, but like 26 states where it's legal, Indian reservations all over the place. But outside of the United States, it's literally legal, I mean, not everywhere, but a lot of other places as well. So if you're interested in traveling or you wanna work on a cruise ship, those are always opportunities for you. The money can be can vary a lot. And, and, and I always tell people that if you're looking to go out of market, your first motivation shouldn't necessarily be about the money, it should be about the travel, you know what I mean, and, and getting a new experience. There are there are casinos out of market that do really well, they make great money. I was there when players in Lake Charles opened and it was fantastic money for those dealers the first year. I mean, they were literally going through with trash bags having to dump these, uh, having to dump the, um, the cans, you know, the, the, the can, it was unbelievable. I mean, I don't know, I don't know exactly how much they made, but it was a lot, the dealers did fantastic. And this is the case with like a lot of these new casinos and new markets that are hungry for gaming, this type of thing. But if you go overseas, a lot of Asian countries, this type of thing, the way they manage their payroll and tips and things like that, it's very different from Vegas. So don't expect this big fat paycheck. Um, sometimes it's really just about the experience and then you know you come home and enjoy yourself. Same thing with cruise ships. So some cruise ships, you don't make all that much money, but if you account for the fact that you don't have to pay your expenses, this type of thing, uh, it can be a great opportunity, not to mention the fact that, you know, when you go to these new markets, they can't, a lot of times they can't, you have to gamble in international waters. So if you're part of that casino on a cruise ship, you know that when you get to, um, when you dock, you get to go off, you know what I mean? You get time away from the boat. You can, you know, because the casino has to be closed, that type of thing. So fantastic for you. All right, so I got off the rails. Okay, let's get back to like Vegas specifically because obviously we train most of our dealers here to work in this market. Uh, not always though, believe it or not, we've had quite a few people come out from Canada. We have a couple Japanese students almost every month now, sometimes like 10 uh, who come here and then they go back to Japan and then from Japan they go to other markets. They go to Macau, they go to a number of different Singapore, a number of different markets that are a little closer to them obviously. And some people are actually getting ready for integrated resorts uh, in Japan, but again, off the rails. Okay, back to Vegas, sorry, we're back to Vegas. All right, so Vegas really breaks down into local casinos or what we call valley casino, valley-wide casinos, right? Then you have the downtown area and the strip area, and believe it or not, each of them play out very differently. They're very different markets. They, they attract a very different type of customer for the most part, and uh, they're, they're well suited for different types of people, different types of personalities. So here, I'll give you a quick rundown. So first of all, a lot of dealers, they come to school and they're like, you know what, I wanna work on the Strip. That's where I wanna go because they've, he they've heard about the Strip. The Strip's got all the glamor, it's got all the lights, and you know, uh, uh, frankly, some of the best jobs are all on the Strip. There's some good jobs, Valley Y, by the way. But uh, yeah, so the best jobs, you know, Aria, Bellagio, Cosmo, these kinds of things, obviously all on the Strip. The takeaway is that I personally am not a fan of, I like I like working on the Strip. So over the course of my career, I've enjoyed working on the Strip at different times. It's an interesting, you know, if you love to people watch and you always like having sort of a new group of customers every weekend or every week, Strip is the place to be. I mean, it's fantastic. You have people from, especially if you work Center Strip or you, you, get, to, you, get, the, you get lucky enough to go to Aria, Cosmo, this type of thing. I mean, you have all these foreigners, people from different countries, you get to see all sorts of different types of outfits and different types of styles. I mean, it, it's amazing 
you know, the breadth and width of the hu of humankind. You get to see it all play out on a casino floor. But with that comes the other dynamic of, you know, lots of entitlement, a lot of people that get just take it to excess. They come to Vegas and they literally lose their minds and they act all crazy and they're drunk. I mean, you know, there, there are some casinos I've literally been to in the strip where I, I have like, for some reason, there's just some drunken people like randomly hanging out on the floor. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing how people come to Vegas and just let it all out. And, and you know what? God bless you. You know what I mean? Enjoy yourself here in Vegas. That's what it's all about. But eventually, as a as a as a dealer, some of that interact, some of that interaction sort of grinds on you. It it does for me. So after a while, working a year, two years on the strip, I look for like uh, you know a different setting. To be honest with you, so I worked the Valley a lot. Uh, a lot of different uh, casinos in the valley. I, I worked, uh, you know, uh, Santa Fe. I worked the Gold Coast, the Rio, obviously, sort of off strip properties, this type of thing. And uh, they're fun as well. Uh, the one takeaway. So, so here's here's why they're fun. Their fun is is that before I get to the takeaway, the fun of working in Valley Wide is you get to see the same people every day, right? You get you get to become your you become a regular dealer to your locals right you see a lot of the same people there's a lot of same buyouts you get to know them by name many times you get to meet their families and you know they're they come to the casino to celebrate their birthdays and their quinceaneras and you know what i mean whatever's going on in their life you get to sort of play they they stop by your table they say hello david how are you you know what i mean especially if you're friendly and you're outgoing and you accommodate them and it's it, it, it's a lot of fun it's fantastic i've met I've had some friends over the years I've met on the dice table and quite quite a few. Uh, I love them all. Uh, I've had some uh, great experience, but at the same time, so the takeaway is that as well, right? You're dealing with literally the same action, the same level of play, the same types of people over and over and over again. It gets played out every now and then. You have some sort of, you know, a visitor <laughs> or some tourist that makes it up there or whatever the case is. Uh, especially when I worked at the Santa Fe, that was interesting. I worked there a long time ago before it was actually a station casino. And uh, it was so, it was sort of all on its own. You rarely got to see anybody. It was the same people every day. No tourists, no nothing. If every now and then they'd have some sort of weird business thing up there. You got a little mix, but for the most part, it was the same people. And that can get a little bit grindy, you know, to come into work for, you know, day in and day out dealing with the same people. So the compromise I always loved for that was working downtown. So downtown, you get kind of a mix. You get locals uh, who are local, especially now as well. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. It's been a little downtown's been gentrified a little bit. The whole culture of downtown has changed quite a bit. It used to be a little seedier. Now it's been cleaned up pretty well. There's a lot of people of all walks of life. If you go down there now, it's it's it's, it's a lot of fun. It's very festive. It's uh, it, it's really changed a lot. Uh, but anyway, so the downtown crowd is a kind of a mix. You get locals. You get professionals. You get strip tourists that come. There's a, a number of rides that are there. There's some there's some good foodie uh, outfits. There's uh, better opportunities to play. There's lower limits, so people come for that as well. And that's where that's where me personally, I always like to end up was uh, downtown casinos. The, the one takeaway is the downtown money as far as tokes hasn't always been the best, although it's, it seems to be improving. Table game activity has been going up. We now have the Circa coming in. Golden Nugget's always been a good job. Circa's coming in. And I think in general, I think downtown will slowly start to uptick. I think the toke rate will slowly start going up. I think more and more people will start enjoying table games down there. So I think all in all over the next couple of years, that's gonna be a fantastic place to work. Um, in terms of that, so that's like sort of the basic uh, dealers uh, dynamic in terms of like, you know, where to work, uh, in terms of like your personality or what kind of person you might be able to deal with. Now on the money side, cause I know a lot of you are more interested in the money side, there's actually some very good Valley wide casinos that uh, do very well. Uh, they have a very good clientele, very good upscale clientele, and many of you know exactly who I'm talking about, and that's right. I don't want to go into all those, uh, I don't want to make those sort of distinctions. Obviously, as you know, we have a lot of casino partners, but let's just say going with the Valley type of uh, property is not the worst thing. Some of them make a very good living, and a lot of these casinos, especially Stacy casinos, offer some great benefits, some great opportunities to, to move up, to get promoted from within. So I'm gonna change tack a little bit in terms of the, you know, sort of where to work kind of thing. So I will tell you this. So the, the other part of the conversation that we have with a lot of our students is, is really just whether or not you wanna go for the money, straight up, right up front, you wanna to go to the best possible job out of school, and that's absolutely a thing. There's a lot of people looking for that as an opportunity. 
There are also other considerations that, that you might have, right? So some people come out of school and they really want benefits. So we have jobs where, you know, they're offering benefits straight out of school, day one benefits, right? And that's where to work, right? So really where to work comes down to sort of what your motivations are, what your expectations are, at least coming out of school. If coming out of school, you just want to make the most possible money, then we have a casino for you, right? If you want to get benefits right away, that's a different casino, not necessarily the most money, and that's why they're offering benefits, right? They're giving you the benefits because they know they can't offer you the most money, so they're trying to make it up and give you an incentive to do something else. The other takeaway is how much of this you want to make as a career, because in many cases, making it a career changes your mindset. So if you come into this and saying to yourself, well, I want to work at the Cosmo, two years from now or five years from now or whatever it is because you can't start out working at those casinos it's just not a thing then you have to come with a different mindset then it's not necessarily about the money or even the benefits it's about a casino that offers an opportunity to deal all the games so we have a casino manager here in town who is a, he's actually a vice president of casino operations he's pretty famous for having been a supervisor of top tier casino and he has applied that same management style to the casino he runs now the important distinction of working for him, you don't actually make the most money at his casino, but that's not the point. The point is that you get to get around the games and get practice working all the games. And, and even high limit, like literally right out of school, you have an opportunity to go around, deal blackjack, deal baccarat, deal dice, and work through a high limit pit. So when the Cosmo comes calling or the Aria comes calling or any of these high tier places, you know, have an opportunity to open up, you can very realistically walk into those casinos and have a great audition because you're well versed and well practiced in those types of, uh, in those games, right? So, so really it comes down to a, a couple of things in terms of where you want to work. It comes down to, you know, what your situation is, right? What your expectations are and ultimately whether or not you want to make a career out of this you know uh, where do you want to go where do you see yourself where do you see yourself you know six months from now one year from now ten years from now and all of those should play you know a factor in where you want to work and what opportunities are available to you and we try to help when everybody comes into our school we sit down with everyone as an individual and as we get to know you me and Alex we get to know you over the course of your time here at the school and you know we get a heads up on you know your personality um, what might be a best fit for you what's close to you and ultimately how you how this is going to fit into your long-term goals right so um that's where you work work where you want to work <laughs> work what in a place that uh, is is suits you the best and um there you go take care guys like subscribe all that stuff and i'll see you next time bye